This video is on multiplying and dividing fractions. As always, if you need to pause it and copy things down or pause it and try things on your own. So back in the days when we were just limited to whole numbers, we always think multiplication gets bigger. But now in the world of rational numbers, that's not necessarily true anymore. For instance, if we start with four and we multiply it by one half, we know that four times a half is two. So we started off with Four, we multiplied it by a rational number and it became smaller. So now when we're working with fractions, make everything look like a fraction. So if we were to do this again, four is now four over one times one half. We want numerators and we want denominators. Any whole number you can make look like a fraction by putting it over one. And now that we have numerators and denominators, when I multiply fractions, I can go ahead and just multiply across the tops and across the bottoms. And as always, I make sure that my final answer is relatively prime. We can say two over one, or we can say two. Likewise, if we started off with one and two thirds, um, one and two thirds, I need to have only a numerator and only a denominator. So my first step would be two convert this to an improper fraction, and then you can proceed from there. So with multiplication, uh, it's pretty easy because you just work across. You multiply the numerators, then you multiply the denominators, finally you simplify at the end. But cross simplifying makes th things even easier. So when I say cross simplify, that just means divide out the common factor shared by the numerator and the denominator. So again, with the same exact example, I had four over one times one half. I notice that I have a four here in the numerator and a two in the denominator. I can go ahead and simplify now. All I need is one on the top and one on the bottom. So four halves is two over one. Now when I, sim when I multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom, I have exactly the simplest form here. It's a way to verify that your final answer will be relatively prime. So now let's talk modeling. When I'm talking about model, there's something called the Brownie model that unfortunately we're going to have to know because it was gonna end up on our star test. Um, we're gonna start with the example of 1 fourth times 2 thirds. According to our algorithm up here, I can multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, simplify my final answer until I get a relatively prime version of one over six. The bit here, like so, one piece of it is here. Then in the other direction, I'm gonna model two thirds. So I divide it into thirds and I shade two of those thirds. I'm gonna go ahead and do it in the opposite direction. Wherever those are overlapped is going to be your answer. So you look at how many pieces I have as a portion of the total. So if I have a grid that is three by four, I have 12 pieces in total. That's what I end up here. I just have to simplify it at the end. So with our model, you model the fourth, you shade the fourth, you model the two thirds, you shade the two thirds, wherever they overlap is actually going to be. Anytime I would get to a do now section, you're gonna go ahead and pause it and try this on your own before you unpause it to look for the solution. So right now, please model the fraction, multiplication, four fifths times one third. So with our starting rectangle, I have to divide it up into fifths with four lines. I shade four of those fifths. Then in the other direction, I go ahead and construct thirds. I shade one of those thirds, and then I circle where they're double overlapped, which is here. I see one, two, three, four of them. How big are the pieces? Well, it's three by five. They're four fifteenths. So my answer to this is four fifteenths. So cross simplifying is the process of dividing out the common factors from the numerators and denominators before multiplying. You're gonna see this process done by me a couple times and then I'm gonna ask you to do a couple on your own. So our first example is 3 tenths times 5 twelfths. Before I go crazy and multiply the tops and the bottoms, I look in both directions. I see that 3 over 12 can become 1 over 4. I see that five over 10 are both divisible by five, 
so I be it becomes 1 over 2. Once I've done tops and bottoms both directions, I can go ahead and multiply the numerators, multiply these denominators, and I will end up with an answer that is guaranteed to be relatively prime. But always be cautious and check to see if I can divide out any other factor before you go ahead and box it out, just as a check. So here's our second example, and please do these along with me. I've got 7 over 21 times 9 over 10. Anytime we do fraction work, you're going to want to deal with small numbers. So I'm looking at the fraction 7 over 21, and I can go ahead and simplify that right now. 7 over 21 is 1 over 3. Then I look across, and I see a 3 on the bottom, a 9 on the top. I divide out 3, becomes 3 over 1. I look in the other direction, can't do it. So I go ahead and multiply the smaller numbers on the top, multiply the smaller numbers on the bottom, and I have an answer of 3 tenths that is relatively prime. Now we have a situation where in multiplication I can have unlimited factors. So what if I say 30 elevenths times 9 twentieths times 22 over 3. I would definitely not want to multiply these three numbers together or these three numbers together only to simplify it down later on. I'm going to do that as I go along. And when I have this process, all I need is one on the top and one on the bottom. Doesn't even matter that they're next to each other. So I look at the 30 and I can simplify the 30 with the 20 or the 30 with the 3. So to demonstrate my purpose, I'm going to show you that I got a 30 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. That becomes 10 over 1. So they don't have to be next to each other because of the commutative property of multiplication. I can switch them in whatever order I want. So then I go on and I see an 11 on the bottom. I see a multiple of 11 on the top. So I divide it to make it 2 over 1. And then I'm still looking. Now I have options. I have a 20 on the bottom. I have a 10 on the top and a 2 on the top. The choice is yours. My advice to you is always go after the bigger one because I want to deal with small numbers. So 10, so 10 over 20 becomes 1 over 2. And then I can still keep going. I have a 2 on the bottom and a 2 on the top that becomes a 1 over 1. If I've done this in all directions, top and bottom, I can go ahead and multiply 1, 9, 1. And on the bottom, I got a bunch of ones. My answer is 9. And I never, ever, ever had to multiply 30 by 9 by 22, nor these original numbers. So cross simplification means that you save yourself a lot of work. So now is the time for you to practice this. Your do now is you're practicing the process of cross simplifying prior to multiplication. So try these, pause it now, and then we'll discuss. So with example one, I'm looking in both directions. I'm looking at a nine on the top and a 47 on the bottom. Nine and 47 are relatively prime to each other, but I look at the top in the other direction and I see 40 over 10 becomes four over one. And now when I multiply across the top, nine times three, nine times four is 36, one times 47 is 47. Even though this may look pretty big, and you may think I can simplify it anymore, we don't have to worry about taking out common factors because I tried it in both directions and it didn't work. So this is relatively prime. With the next example, we have three factors, so now we have options of combinations. I am going to remember my integer rules, however. Two negatives mean I will have a positive answer. So I'm going to go ahead and circle them, put my positive here. I see a 4 on the top and an 8 on the bottom. 4 eighths is 1 half. I see a 27 on the top and a 9 on the bottom. 27 divided by a 9 is 3 over 1. 26 on the top, 13 on the bottom, makes that 2 over 1. And then, if I'm extra vigilant, I still see that there's a 2 and a 2. But pretend that I had forgotten to do that, and I go ahead and multiply now. 1 times 2 times 3 is 6. And then 1 times 1 times 2 is 2. And then you're like, wait a minute, this isn't relatively prime. That must mean that someone was forgotten. So we could have simplified these two and gotten to the actual answer of 3 over 1. Positive, of course. 